Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. I'm Stacy Ogden. I'm the host of Side Hustle Teachers, this community, the podcast, the blog. If it's Side Hustle Teachers, um, it's my happy place. So today we are talking about content pillars. This is what uh, this week's blog post was all about. And if you've noticed, the Side Hustle Teachers podcast is back up and running. So for each blog post that goes out each week, there will be an accompanying podcast, which is basically a red version of the blog post for those of you who prefer to listen. So I'm trying to touch on all my different learning styles. Okay, so this week we're talking about um, content pillars, which are basically these overarching categories that your content that you create for your blog, podcast, or video show should fall into. And the the purpose of this, right, is to not only keep you focused, but also because if you can stay focused on these content pillars, what you're doing is you're addressing the needs of your audience in a way that gets them to know, understand, or believe whatever it is they need to know, understand, or believe in order to work with you. So you are sort of filling in the gaps for them between where they are and where you can lead them, what the transformation is that you offer, whether it's coaching services or a physical product, what is it that you can provide? And this is where your content fills that gap because sometimes you hear a thing and you're like, I don't know what that thing is. It's not for me. But if you can learn more about it, in a non-pressured way, right? This is the thing about content is it's not a high pressure thing. It's not a sales page. It's, it's just information that you're putting out there for free for people to interact with that can help them understand you better, what you do and why you do it. Right. So one of the things that has come up is people are looking for some more examples. So I had a couple examples in the blog post about how content pillars could work depending on your different um, area of business. So what I did is I actually went through last week's promo post and I went and I sort of picked out a couple of themes that I saw in the promos. So in other words, these are based on businesses that I actually see in the side hustle teachers community popping up over and over and over again. And so I took these themes and I kind of came up with my own content pillars for them based on my own sort of faux business. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. So the first one is um, if you have a business selling teaching resources to kindergarten teachers, right? And you'll notice I'm being super specific because you want your content to be super specific. You want your product or your service to be super specific. That's how you help more people. I know it feels counterintuitive, but trust me, just roll with me here for a minute. Okay, so let's say that your business is you're selling teaching resources to kindergarten teachers. And either now or in the future, you would like to sell or you do sell a full curriculum to kindergarten teachers. Okay, so this is our business. We sell our teaching resources. The big product where we're kind of leading people down the road is a full curriculum for kindergarten teachers. So some content pillars that you could have come up with for this particular business would be centers, right? How to run them, what kind of activities work best in centers, how do you supervise centers, you know, how do you use centers to build leadership among students, those sort of things. Literacy, right? The alphabet, letter sounds reading in general, you know, literacy, numeracy, right? Numbers, manipulatives, all things math and social emotional learning, right? Building friendships, empathy, recognizing feelings. So any of these things that you work with kindergartners on. Now that's only four. Obviously, if you wanted to include some sort of um, social studies or science or whatever, you could also do that. But here's the thing. You want to make sure you're focused on your kindergarten teachers. And that's so that when you're talking, whether it be in your podcast or your video or your blog, you can talk to your teachers, right? You, you don't want to talk and be like, la, 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 la. well, you know, you teachers of people in this grade, it just narrow it down. Okay. So these 
topics, these content pillars will help you stay focused on your content. And they also lead people in to your big idea, which is a full curriculum. So it both provides information, which all of your content should be helpful and serve your audience. And it also leads them to know you, like you, and trust you as a source of information. Okay, so let me give you another one. So let's just say our second business is a holistic health coach for busy teachers, right? And the full, like the big product or service that you're leading them towards is a fitness membership program. Okay. So for this particular business, you could come up with the four content pillars of good habits, right? Maybe morning routines or bedtime routines or habit tracking. It could be meditation, right? Five minute practice, um, after school meditation, pre-meeting meditation, right? And this is again, where knowing your audience really comes into play because, you know, uh, someone who is in a different industry doesn't need a specific meditation before walking into an IEP meeting or walking into a staff meeting or, you know, walking into a tedious mind numbing PD session. So these are things that you can offer recipes, right? Whole food recipes, smoothies, quick on the go things, foods that you can keep in your teacher desk when you don't get a break. And the last one you could do is like get moving, right? Stretches, you could do exercise, you could talk about equipment, um, you know, under desk exercises or quick minute, quick five minute exercises that you can do before you go pick your kids up from specials, like things like this. These pillars help you establish yourself as an expert, someone your audience would turn to for advice in one particular area. So if you if you go too broad, then it doesn't help. It doesn't actually define you as an expert. It actually does the opposite. You want to be narrow, right? And along the way, you can use these little posts to sell other things as long as they're still moving you towards the, the big picture, right? So if you, for example, want to be known as a minimalism coach, right? Let's just put out a couple of pieces of content here for a minimalism coach, right? Your your first content is on like the physical act of decluttering. Like how do you actually physically do it? Systems, whatever. Another one, say hi, Cece, she's behind me. <laughs> Another one would be on the mindset of letting go, right? A lot of people have trouble letting go of things. And then there's another one on actively resisting consumerism since it's so rampant in our society. If you if these are the posts that you put out there and that's sort of all within your content pillars, that's really going to let your audience understand your message, know who you are, know what your purpose is, what your drive is, why you're there to help them and how you can help them. However, if in your next run, right, so you've got this thing about decluttering, you've got this thing about mindset, you've got this thing about consumerism, and then you post a recipe for a really cool fish taco that you tried with your family. <laughs> what? Where did that come from? Not only does your audience get confused about what your purpose is and what to expect from your content, let me tell you, if I subscribed to a minimalism blog and I got an email with a fish taco recipe, I'm unsubscribing because that's not what you promised. That recipe doesn't do anything to move them towards your offer. Like let's say your offer is a group coaching program on how to be live a more minimalist lifestyle. Your recipe doesn't, it doesn't fit. So when you figure out your content pillars, you can really exclude anything that doesn't fit into those pillars, right? That if your pillars were like physical decluttering, mindset, um, you know, commercialism and consumerism and, you know, charities, like how to give to charity properly, then you would know right away that a fish taco recipe doesn't fit in any of those categories and you wouldn't bother writing that post or sharing that podcast or recording that video episode. You would know, but 
if you don't have the content pillars, sometimes we, our brains trick us into doing just whatever they want to do instead of what will actually help move us forward. So now I want to I want to speak for a second to the people who are like, but I don't have an offer yet. I don't know what I'm going to sell. If that's you, I understand that you might be thinking, well, great, I don't have anything to offer, so I can't choose my content pillars. But in fact, you can and you should because you may not have something to sell yet, but you have an idea of something you want to sell. So create content that will have people to buy that as soon as it's ready. And big bonus, huge bonus here. The content that you put out while you are not yet having anything to offer is going to give you a massive amount of insight into what your audience really, really wants from you. You'll see what they respond to and what they don't respond to, what their questions are, and you can really tailor whatever it is you offer, whether it's a product or a service or a, you know, a coaching relationship, you can really tailor it to what they're asking for based on their feedback to your free content, right? Okay. So now the big thing is how do you actually select these two, these content pillars? So you can think of, here's like the straightforward way. Think of four to six categories that your audience needs to know in order to be ready to buy from you, right? So again, what do they need to know, understand, or believe before they fully see the value of their offer, of your offer? <laughs> I'll say that again. What do they need to know, understand, or believe before they fully see the value of your offer? this is some of the things you can break it down into, right? So I'll give you an example for side hustle teachers since I, I've, I've niched down even further. So I'm talking about content, like if you haven't noticed all the time now. So my pillars are content planning, content crafting, content distribution, and email list building, which doesn't seem like it fits in there, but I promise it does. Um, because, you know, it's how you distribute. It's It's a piece of the of the cog. It's a cog in the machinery, whatever. Okay. So here's the thing. If that is, if that feels like a struggle for you, if you can't really like wrap your head around that, like, I don't know, four to six categories, you can also work this in reverse. In other words, brainstorm like as a huge list, a big list of possible topics for you to share on your blog, your podcast, or your video show. Then you can look at this list and see what categories naturally just emerge to you, right? So you might find some outliers, you might find some fish tacos in there, but you can sort of set those aside and you can put those in, you know, your idea journal or your, you know, maybe later book or whatever that someday maybe you can come back to them. But especially especially at the beginning, it is super important for you to stick to your content pillars because people don't know you. You don't have a reputation yet. You are building your reputation and you want your reputation to be solid and focused on what you want your reputation to be focused on. If you come out with uh, you know, if you're a recipe blogger and you have a recipe for fish tacos, I apologize. There's nothing against fish tacos. It's just my example today. But if you come out with fish tacos as a minimalism coach or as a business coach or as, um, I don't know, who else wouldn't talk about fish tacos, <laughs> like a virtual assistant, it's not going to serve you and it's not, it's not going to help you build your authority. It's going to actually make you go a couple steps back. So a couple things before I wrap up to keep in mind. First of all, you need to remember your ideal customer group's pain points and desires. So what is it? What is the problem that they are having that you are hoping to solve, that you have a solution for? And what do they want, right? So it's kind of two ends. Where are they and what what's their struggle right now? And then on the other end, it's where do they want to be and what would that look like? That's where your content pillars are, getting them from struggle to euphoria. Okay. You can create subcategories. So if you have a category for recipes and it gets too big, you can break it down into breakfast, lunch, dinner, 
right? So you don't have to just stick with the four. You can have subcategories. So if you're talking about centers for your, your kindergarten teachers, then you can have separate categories for math centers, literacy centers, um, you know, coloring centers, art centers, music centers, whatever it is, you can break it down into different categories. Every piece of content has to fit into one of your pillars. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't get created. Right. I mentioned an example of this in the blog post this week, and there's good reason for this. You want to keep your audience thinking of you for one thing and one thing only. Right. When you want an electrician, when something when something is sparking in your house, you call an electrician. You don't call some guy, you know, who kind of knows a little bit about everything. You call an electrician. So when you want to be known as a holistic health coach, you need to keep your content focused on that. And that's what your pillars are good for. And last but not least, every piece of content you create should have a purpose. With this piece of content, you need to think to yourself, am I trying to build authority, establish relationships, or am I trying to sell something? Right? Those are basic, that's the, the three purposes that your content should serve. Am I trying to build authority, establish relationships, or sell something? So let me give you an example from one of our earlier examples. <laughs> so if you're talking about selling teaching resources to kindergarten teachers, and your big program is a full curriculum, you might have little posts that lead to your teaching resources that they can buy on, you know, a website like Teachers Pay Teachers. Or we have a couple other people in the group who also have teaching resource websites like The Wheel and Amped Up Learning, I believe is another new one. So wherever you're selling your resources, you can write about that. You can share the process. You can, you can go for that. And then at the end, your call to action can be, hey, you can go buy this thing. That's fine as long as that's not every single post you write, right? Or you can write posts to build relationships with your audience or to establish your authority, right? So to become the expert. But it fits in a pillar and it has a purpose. Are your two main focuses when you create content? All right, my friends, there is no Facebook Live next week because I will be on vacation. Um, this is the last week I should have to miss because of that reason. Um, so I will see you in two weeks right back here, 7.30 p.m., of course, Eastern Time, same bat place, same bat station. And until then, <laughs> happy hustling. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button to never miss a video from Side Hustle Teachers. Videos are recorded live in the private Side Hustle Teachers Facebook group every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Follow the link in the description and answer the three simple questions to join today. See you soon.